Okay, so that's why Unai Emery has to say about this trip to Leicester, who, as we said there, managed to hold Tottenham to a draw before they were seen off in a 2-1 defeat uh, at Fulham last weekend. As for Aston Villa, they started the campaign with a win over West Ham, but lost to Arsenal last time around. And this week, they have found out who they'll be facing in this new-look Champions League mm-hmm. cast, their first foray into top European uh, Competition since what the 1982 83 seasons. Just quickly to run you through it, we don't yet know when they'll be playing these games, we should say, um, but these are the teams they will be facing, and they already know if it's home and away because remember, they play eight games uh, in this league phase four home, four away. They're playing Bayern Munich at home, Leipzig away, Juventus at home, Club Bruges away, Celtic at home, Young Boys away, Bologna at home, and also Monaco. Two. So, looking at that, you think they might be well confident of getting through as maybe one of the top eight sides that yeah. qualify straight away. If you don't make it through from the top eight, ninth to 24 will go through a playoff system and the rest will be eliminated in that league phase. So, do you think Aston Villa could well be able to manage both Champions League and everything else that's well they've invested they've invested you know good money on buying players bringing in players to add to their squad so um yeah i mean it's a tough group i mean Bayern munich in in, in that group group. oh sorry league (laughs) league okay i know i know league we're all gonna get caught out yeah but i mean you know there's some big clubs in there juve celtic you know Bologna is an interesting one because they sold their best two players uh, during the summer. Monaco is full of young lads, so it wouldn't mm. be the Monaco of years gone by. But yeah, they've got a chance to pick up points. Interestingly, Bayern's at home, Juve's at home, mm. um, you know, Celtic at home. Yeah, they're all they're all big, huge games. Um, so I think Villa have got a squad to deal with it. It's just uh, you never quite know, do you, of how this format's going to work because when you go from Premier League games and how much it, it hurts the squad and the bodies that you've got available as a manager and how your injuries are managed as well. It's a tough one. I think you, you're spinning plates with European football, especially Europa League and the Champions League now has gone to more games. So it's a it's going to be a challenge for Villa. Yeah, very much so. One. Yeah, and if you're going to go all the way to the final, you've got to play a maximum of 17 games. I know. It's quite hefty Yeah, on the old schedule. Um, but... I know Unai Maria has spoken already this season about the aims and maybe they're bearing in mind that this is their first venture, as we mentioned, to Europe, especially in the Champions League for, for some time. He sort of said, look, the aim really is to finish at least in the top 10 or the top six. That's yeah. what they're looking at. Is that realistic then for him? In I, sense, I think so. Is yeah. he, what I mean more is, is he just trying to temper the expectations after what was a fabulous season last time around finishing in the top four? Is he sort of saying, look, this is another competition to add to our schedule. We've got to slightly temper things. Yeah, it's, I, I agree. And a good way of I agree to a degree, it. but also there's a lot of excitement at Villa Park. Yeah, and, of you know, we saw it against Arsenal. That game was really tight. Mm-hmm. Ollie Watkins had two great chances. Raya pulls off a great save, and Arsenal end up winning the game. You know, that, that was a tough game for either side. He knows he's got a good side. I saw them at West Ham in the opening game. I thought they played really well. I think they'll go to Leicester, and I think they'll beat Leicester today. I think they're they're a very capable side Um, with a lot of pace. Morgan Rogers is an exciting player that didn't get into the England squad, but is a player that could easily get down uh, in in the squad during the course of a season. There's there's a lot of things to like about Aston Villa. Yeah, were you surprised then about Rogers not being included? Say surprised. He was at, Maybe he was at the game, Lee Carsley. Yeah, um, well, he played really but, well. Um, Arsenal game. You never know what a manager's thinking. But he certainly done enough for me for to for, to have you put a seed in his head that you know I'll keep an eye on him. We'll have mm. lads watch him. I'm sure they'll be watching him during the course of the season, of how he, you know, how he deals with being a Premier League player and how often he is playing. But I think Villa. This is a really tricky test for him. Going to Leicester, they've lost the, the the game against Arsenal, which they didn't play poorly, and it could have gone either way. Like I said. Um, Leicester have done a bit of business, but a lost players like Jewsbury Hall as well. I mean, getting in Ollie Skip, uh, Harry Winks has been there, so there's that Tottenham connection with Ndidi in midfield. That's a hard midfield to get through. I think it's a great challenge for Aston Villa. Mm. Um, in terms of, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, Aston Villa, away games. They've done really well under Unai oh. Emery. It's only Manchester City and Arsenal that have won more since he took charge 
in November 2022. I mean, that is really impressive to make that impact. It's all very well doing it at home, but when you know you can do it on the road as well. Yeah. Well, they're, they're built to be a counter-attacking team as well. I mean, I know Matty Cash got injured, didn't he, against Arsenal, so I don't think he'll be available. Um, but didn't you one side, uh, Matty Cash always were available as wingers to counter and have a style. I mean, McGinn tucks in when they, they go. When Dinya goes, he tends to t- tuck in. Um, so I... I think Villa are suited home and away to pick up points. They're a, they're a side that's designed to pick up a lot of points during the course of a season, whether it's a Villa part, whether it's away. And you mentioned Leicester. Obviously, Steve Cooper, new man in charge, trying to make his imprint on this team. He's looking to become the first, or to avoid become becoming the first Leicester manager to not win any of his first three games in charge. You've got to go back to when Paolo Sosa was in charge mm. in 2010. They drew their first game, they lost their first game as well. They did beat Trammer in the League Cup 4-0, yeah. so they've you know got that little bit of confidence perhaps to, to build upon, which I'm sure a lot of teams who maybe haven't started their league campaign well will be trying to use as momentum to get going. Mm. We saw against Tottenham in particular in that first game, that sort of never-say-die attitude. And even though Tottenham were brilliant in the first half, they fell away and Leicester just took charge of that. It, or say, I should say, took advantage of that. Mm. That's that kind of resilience that you need to see a lot of from Leicester with Steve Cooper and his side. Yeah, they um, were completely outplayed for the best part of an hour. Yeah. They stuck in there and got something. They got the rewards for staying in a game... And obviously Jamie Vardy doing what he can do is always someone who can produce a moment. They lost to Ian Nacho in the summer, didn't they? He's moved away from the club. Dakar, I think, is injured. So they're really short on forward options. So they've got Edouard on loan that's come from Crystal Palace that obviously Brendan Rodgers has worked with before. Mm. Uh, sorry, who, uh, Brendan Rodgers. He's a bloody, he's a Celtic, isn't he? Uh, but they've got, um, they've got Edouard to come to the club. That's right, yeah. So, you know. Which... There's a lot of reliance on Jamie Vardy, but someone like a, an Edward hopefully bring is that backup or who knows? He could be seen as the future for them if they. I know he signed a new deal at Crystal Palace, but yes. in terms of this season, but this season, well, he he's a strange one, Edward, because he he has moments where he gets goals. Um, he's not a regular goal scorer, which he was at Scot in Scotland, but when he did play for Palace, he always chipped in with, with some important goals, and I think that's what they're looking at. They they they're very short. I feel up front. Leicester. Yeah. That's Leicester. their biggest issue. Yeah. We saw against Fulham. Well, you few... can't rely on Vardy. V- Vardy well, that's not... what I'm saying, but that's why they brought in Edward as yeah. an option. But Vardy played. He, I think he played. He was. He came more off the bench mm. uh, than games he started last year. And he still ended up their top goal scorer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and against Fulham, there were some defensive issues for yeah. them. Uh, Fulham were able to sort of walk through them at times, which would be a bit of an issue for Steve Cooper, I'm sure, coming into this game. Do you think, from what you've seen of their transfer business then... You kind of maybe alluded to it a bit earlier on. Do you think Leicester are going to be involved in a relegation battle? I'd be amazed if they're not in the the bottom six uh, because they really... Steve Cooper's got a huge challenge there. He really has. Um, Look, he he had that similar scenario at Nottingham Forest, but there's going to be a big change. I can't see Leicester pushing much on beyond that. It's going to be a challenge. Dewsbury Hall was massive for them last year, you know, as a player. He's a very technically gifted player. Okay, it was in the championship. But now they've gone to the Premier League. They've got a solid midfield. With that midfield that I mentioned before of Ended Day, uh, Winks and uh, Skip, there's a lot of energy in there to stop the opposition. Mm. You mentioned it earlier. Their back four was easy to get out. Their, their midfield is going to be really important for Leicester this year. And just a final word on Aston Villa, Ollie Watkins. Obviously... Hasn't got going yet. No, but you can even take this back, I think, to last season. I think it's now seven league appearances without a goal for Villa. Mm. How much of a concern is that? Um, I, d- I don't think over the course of the season, Ollie will get goals. Yeah, um, he's in a good side, and they create. I just look. No, he could have easily had a brace against Arsenal. I, know. I mean, we got you know easily. Okay, the header it was a great save. C- could he have buried it in the corner? Yes, he could. The first one's a tricky one. It, it's a slow ball that across the, comes across the face of him, and he's tried to just stick it, you know, stick it in the corner, and he sticks it wide of the post. Mm. Well, he'd be fine. Um, you know, the Villa fans, they know what they've got. They've got a hell of a good player in there. And I, I thought we had an exceptional season. The competition in the summer just adds to, you know, is he quite as fresh as what he was? I think you'll probably see Oli get, get going very, very quickly. 
Well, he's certainly got John John Duran there. Yeah. To give him a little bit of a back up. Yeah. Well, if you well, call it a bad competition, competition shall we say, yeah. that he might need. He has been called up into the England squad, though, we should point out, uh, by Lee Carsley, despite the fact that, yes, he hasn't got off on the mark when it comes to goal scoring, but he can still be a threat, as we all know. Uh, OK, when we return, we'll head back into the papers with Angelina Kelly. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.